Lawmakers have returned to Tallahassee and tax cuts are the top priority for many of our representatives. Here to tell us what's on his list for the 2015 legislative session is this hour's newsmaker, Representative Rich Workman of District 52 in the Melbourne area in Central Florida. Representative Workman, great to have you here on Newsmakers from Tallahassee. Thanks. Good to be here. So getting ready for the session and uh, you are introducing something called the All-American Flag Act. It sounds very patriotic. Tell us, <laughs> tell us a little bit about it. Well, it's interesting. Um, uh, you know, uh, it won't be a bill that I run myself, but uh, uh, as a rules chair, we typically don't run bills. But um, uh, it did come out of Brevard County, uh, my home district, and uh, a high school history teachers, students, put together a project a couple of years ago. What bill would, that, would they like to see passed? And what came out of that, I think, is a very fascinating uh, bill, and uh, it, it's moving through the system now. Um, it will require all state governments, so you're talking about the, st the state of Florida, um, the local municipalities, cities, counties, whenever they buy a U.S. flag or a state flag, it must be manufactured in the United States of America. Um, so it's a mandate, um, but we have a coalition of the cities and counties all agreeing with it. 94% um, of U.S. flags are currently made in the United States, but that is down from 100% just a few short years ago. So China is getting inroads in making our, our flag, and uh, this little American Flag Act uh, just says, you know, if we're going to display the symbol of America uh, over our government buildings, perhaps it should be made in the United States. So uh, it's an interesting little bill. Uh, it's already passed the first committee reference, and it should, uh, should be doing well. You're also working on a legislation that would change the state's alimony laws. This yeah. is very important to you. It, it, it is. Um, I've been working on alimony reform uh, for about six years. Um, had, it, had it passed the House and the Senate a few years ago, but uh, due to some issues in the bill, the governor vetoed it. Um, um, Rick Scott vetoed it, and uh, he and I have met on it, and I understand where his concerns were. And so we've gotten together now over the past year and a half uh, with the family section uh, of the Florida Bar, which they're the ones that have custody, if you will, over alimony in the bar, uh, and along with the reforming groups, trying to get a bill together uh, that would avoid a veto and avoid a food fight. Why do we need alimony reform? It's a great question, and uh, it, it, uh, there's nothing personal in alimony for me. I've never paid it or received it, um, but it hasn't been written, uh, rewritten in, in 50 years. And it, it, it makes a lot of assumptions about the roles of males and females that are just not up to date. Um, it, it allows for um, permanent alimony, it allows for long-term alimony on a short-term divorce. It, it, it's a very difficult, a lot of people uh, use alimony as a weapon. It causes wedges between kids and, and parents. Um, what we're trying to accomplish this year uh, is, is to make alimony uh, uh, sex blind. So it's not leaning one way to one sex or the other, um, and it keeps the kids safe and, uh, as far as parents fighting, and it gives a start, middle, and end date to alimony um, while making sure those that need it get it and um, making sure those that, that pay it can one day stop paying it. Looks like you'll be working with a budget surplus, always a nice thing yeah. when you're a legislator. Uh, what type of priorities uh, do you have for that budget uh, when you guys get together and meet on it? Well, you know, elected in 2008, um, for the first uh, four years, um, we had a deficit that we had to cut the budget for. Um, and so these are different times. Now, um, as a fiscal conservative, what we don't want to do is expand the scope of government as a result of having additional dollars flowing in the coffers. So th the first priority for me is a tax cut. The second priority is a rainy day fund and putting money away. Um, the, governor the governor proposed uh, reducing what's called the CST. Stu it's a name no one understands, the Communication Services Tax. In layman's terms, it's the um, uh, the luxury tax on your cell phone or on your uh, the, the the crazy thing called cable TV, right? <laughs> you, uh, so we have these luxury taxes of things that are not luxuries; they're they're, they're basic necessities these days. Um, and so we're, the governor's proposed cutting that back dramatically. It's about a three billion dollar tax, and over time he hopes to phase it out to, to nil. So what are some other priorities for you this 2015 session, Representative oh, Workman? Well, you know, um, uh, I, I have run some pretty heavy lifts in the in the years past. Um, I've done alimony reform, uh, pension reform, growth management reform. This year, I've, I, my soft spot in my heart is for the, uh, the elephants in Africa and India. Uh, 96 of them are killed every year for their tusks and for nothing else. And uh, I want to strengthen the laws in Florida so that uh, elephant tusks cannot be bought or sold or imported into this state. We're the number two importer in the world of illegal elephant tusks, and I, I want to wipe it out. Well, interesting. Sounds like you'll be busy this session. Representative Workman, thanks for being with us from here in Tallahassee. Pleasure's all Good mine. Good luck. Thanks a lot. And this hour's newsmaker has been Representative Rich Workman. I'm Phil Latzman, and thank you for watching.